So this is going to feel so much better. Oh Christ! Getting the crap hole out of it. <gasps> oh, well done. So you kept saying you wanted uh, to burst it. Yeah. This is a case of a soft tissue infection that I've recently managed. Patient was sent through from a local podiatrist with sesamoiditis. Patient in question had had a left first metatarsophalangeal joint fusion done by a local orthopaedic surgeon and done very well, but had still had some pain to the left first MTPJ and had failed conservative and orthotic care. And he was sent through to me to see whether there was anything further that we could do surgically to manage the pain underneath the metatarsal head. As you can see, by the time we presented, had quite a nasty soft tissue infection, so that was clearly my first focus. A general algorithm on the management of such a foot might include initially expressing the pus and doing that under uh, atraumatic non-touch technique, obviously sending off a swab to the lab to see if we can culture an appropriate bug, looking at local wound care, considering baseline bloods for maybe a full blood count um, and some inflammatory markers, so a CRP or an ESR. In this case, did a baseline x-ray, looking to rule out signs of early infection, although um, obviously an infection in bone is going to be somewhat delayed. You're not going to see early changes on an x-ray, but it's particularly to look at what was going on with the previous surgery. I'll put that up in a sec. And then to continue to monitor the patient to the wound, repeat again with, with bloods and imaging per required need. And of course, if it's not responsive to antibiotic therapy, to escalate that up, think about an MRI, incision and drainage, maybe pulse lavage, target the antibiotics as required. David didn't tell me that bit. Did he not? <laughs> no. So you can see you've Ooh. got... I'm coming over to have a look. Ah. I'm getting dumpsy. Ah. Yeah. Oh my so goodness. So what we've got is just a little bit of yickiness coming out. <laughs> ah. So this is going to feel so much better oh, Christ. getting the crap holer out of it. <gasps> Oh, well so you kept saying you wanted uh, to burst it. Yeah. So I, didn't, my hand. I didn't know. <laughs> Squeeze your hand. Are you talking to me or your husband? <laughs> Squeeze my hand. I can't feel under that. Yeah, you do make me laugh because it's... Uh... Well, I'm a frustrated comedian. So this is a case of getting all the infection out. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of cool. So having cleared out the infection... I've gone back and I've re-cleaned the foot. You can see there's quite a bit of juice that came out. And then I've done local wound care. I've decided to leave the roof of the blister in place at this point. Uh, I've packed it with iodine. And I'm going to see the guy back in two days' time, having put him on Augmentin as a first-line antibiotic. Here's the baseline x-ray. I was really looking to see that there was no sign of any hardware issues from the first MTPJ arthrodesis, such as a screw that was too long or had broken or there was some other, other issue with the bone. But no, the x-ray was absolutely bob on. So a few days later, he returns back under ANTT again to do a re-cleaning of the wound. At this point, I've managed to get most of the roof of the blister off. This is how he looked when I've taken the dressing off from week one and started to debride some of that overlying roof of blister. Most of it came off quite easily, just a little bit came away with just a little bit of a fight. And then that shows where the infection came from. So there was actually three small ulcers in the skin. These are gonna heal quite nicely now that the, uh, the infection's been dealt with. I've probed one of the ulcers just to check that it doesn't probe deeply, and it did not. So it's back on the sterile dressing, and also with the dressing, what I've done is I've padded and offloaded the foot so that also can heal. And then having cleared the infection, my next job is to see how can we stop this getting infected again and is there anything I need to do to this foot surgically? But that will be the content of another video. Thanks very much. And it's just worth reiterating that I always get patients' consent to share photos and videos on YouTube. Here's a consent for my use.